What's up guys, today we're going to be discussing older iPhones for 2022, what you need to know about these older flagships. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, so we do have the iPhone 7, we're going to be talking about that in the 7 Plus, the 10R and the iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus over here. And then we have the iPhone 10 and I do have the 10S coming as well. I've already had the phone but I'm getting it back. Uh, but we are going to talk about that one as well too. Now those are the ones that I consider, these are ones that I consider relevant older iPhones. The iPhone 6S and the original SE. I really don't recommend those because of the price uh, you know, problem uh, that we're going to discuss with those phones. Uh, and also we just got news of or leak that uh, phones with the Apple A9 chip won't be supported by iOS 16 so that's even a better reason you know not to recommend those phones so let's go ahead and get started alright so I want to talk about one of my favorite older iPhones uh, first and that is the 10R so this is a very interesting uh, device here so if we look online the 10R is going for around 325 uh, right now and it's a very good phone very powerful phone it is running iOS 15 the thing that makes this phone uh, really awesome is the chipset in here so the Apple A12 chip is very very fast uh, even for you know going into 2022 uh, it is a very fast phone when you're just using social media uh, or you're just gaming or whatever uh, it is very snappy and I think that's very important and I also think this phone is going to get a very long update cycle um, as well because of that so the big difference with this phone and other phone older iPhones is that the phones with the Apple A12 chip so it would be the 10R and the 10S these phones will be able to play games at high settings uh, like PUBG, Call of Duty Mobile it'll pretty much be able to still max out those uh, graphics so that is one thing that I really love about this phone now the only downside with the 10R is definitely it only having a single lens camera uh, on here uh, which is fine if you're just a casual shooter but not having an ultra wide or any type of telephoto lens uh, that's where you know the kind of problem comes in uh, but if you do want a telephoto lens I would recommend going with the 10s because it's got the same a12 chip and it's got that telephoto lens on it as well um, so another thing about this phone in particular is that the image quality is really really close so I did a side-by-side -side camera comparison with the 10R and the 13 and you should be seeing it right now you will be surprised at how impressive the photo quality uh, is on the 10R even though it still has that one lens now I'm not saying that it's better than the 13 but I'm saying for a casual smartphone taker just you know a point and click person um, the photos were pretty close so I was really impressed uh, with the 10R uh, also um, one thing on here is that the display is not an OLED display, it's an IPS display, but it is pretty bright. Um, but this phone also gets very good battery life as well. So I really like the build quality on here. It kind of reminds me of the iPhone 11 as well too. So I think it has a more modern looking build quality to it. Um, so the 10R is definitely one of my favorite um, older iPhones right now. Now if we look at the price of the iPhone 7, it's coming in at this $100 and my issue with the iPhone 7 Plus, when people ask me about it, the issue with this is that it's too close to the iPhone 8 Plus in terms of uh, price here. Uh, so that is an issue for me because the iPhone 8 Plus is definitely a much better device if you want a big iPhone with the, you know, because you want the Touch ID, you want the home button. Uh, so I would not recommend the 7 Plus simply because it's too close to the 8 Plus and the 8 Plus is going to be a better buy. Now, the iPhone 7 on the other hand is perfect for $100. This is perfect for a kid, it's perfect for a backup phone, it's perfect for somebody with an Android phone and you just want to use iOS because you want to use iMessage, FaceTime, something like that with your family members. This is really a great uh, phone for the price point. It's very compact, very small. I love the build quality as well. And uh, I think this phone has aged well. It is going to get iOS 16 as well too, so that is really awesome. Performance on here is pretty solid too. It's not like it's a laggy phone or anything like that. Um, I think for casual use, it's perfectly fine. Um, and also here, you know, it's a small 4.7 inch Retina IPS display. Um, so 
I don't have really any negative things to say about uh, the iPhone 7 here. I think at this price point, it is a really, really nice phone. Now, how long will this phone get updates? Um, I think I would give it to maybe iOS 17. I think that'll probably probably be the last thing. But you can't really be for sure with Apple because of the iPhone 6s is running iOS. Um, it is running iOS uh, 15. So uh, that is quite an, you know an old phone. So this one could you know possibly go to iOS 17. But we know for sure it's getting iOS. Um, it's getting iOS 16. The cameras on these seven are fairly solid not not terrible they you can tell you know it has shown its age but I think the cameras are still pretty clean and good lighting conditions I definitely wouldn't say uh, they're bad by any means I think Apple has done a great job uh, with image quality and video on here is pretty solid as well too so I really like the iPhone 7 as just a um, you know a really cheap you know option here uh, so the iPhone 8 now the iPhone 8, if you really have the money, now the, they, these are going for around 200 bucks. This is kind of a tricky, tricky situation because you can get an iPhone SE 2020 for 300 bucks uh, in the refurbished used marketplace. So I would say if you're gonna spend, you know, the 200, I would say really consider um, getting the SE 2020. It's the same exact phone, same build quality. Um, but with a better camera and also with a way, way, way faster processor. The processor on that phone is absolutely crazy. Uh, but the iPhone 8 by itself is still a pretty good buy. It's way, way smoother than the uh, iPhone 7. That's one thing I noticed, the chipset in here. Uh, it's just a way better performer as well. So I'll say if you can get this phone for a really good price point, um, if you can get it well below 200 bucks, like if you go on eBay or something like that, um, this is way more smooth than the iPhone 8. So uh, if you do want like a secondary phone, like I said, um, a phone just for FaceTime, iMessage, you know, you got an Android or whatever, or you just want to give it to a kid, the performance on here is going to be way smoother. Now, it's not going to be able to max games out and stuff like that, but that's just one thing I noticed with this phone. It's a very smooth phone. I see this phone getting iOS uh, 17 uh pretty easily so um, the cameras on here are also pretty good as well on the iPhone 8 if you guys check out my camera comparison I did uh, this did a pretty good job going against the iPhone 13 now of course you know it's not gonna beat it by any means but um, I was really impressed with image quality on here you get some really nice and sharp images in good lighting conditions um, video is pretty solid on here as well too so I was pretty impressed with the iPhone 8 overall so like I, like I said if you can find this phone for a good deal I would definitely pick it up as a a nice little backup phone or if you want to use it as your main phone because the thing about these smaller iPhones is that they are kind of um, rare I guess in size because of how small they are so I want to show you guys just look at this is your modern smartphone a Galaxy S21 Ultra look how big this is a lot of people if you're not a fan of these massive you know really big kind of heavy phones uh, these are nice alternatives so they really don't make phones with four inch screens like that uh, anymore 4.7 inch screens so um, you know that is really awesome as well so the iPhone 10 and the 10s is probably one of my favorite phones now this is the one I if, if I was to choose any older iPhone I would personally go with the iPhone 10s so it's pretty much the same phone, you know, as the 10, but it has a essential difference. That essential difference is that Apple A12 chip. This one does not have it, so it's got the same processor that the iPhone 8 has. So performance-wise, it's very smooth. Um, but the thing about I love about this is if you can find this at a good price point, uh, it is definitely well worth it. You get the more modern design uh, here. You get Face ID. You get a beautiful OLED display better battery life the cameras are slightly better so if you can get this for a good price point because these are going for around 300 bucks but the reason I said go for a 10s is because watch when I type in 10s and this might be a big price difference just for some people but you know I don't think it's that I think I think it's well worth it if I type in 10s look at that 339 I can get the 10s that means I can play PUBG at high settings no problem the 10s will get have a much longer 
uh, software um, cycle than the uh, the 10 as well. So I would say if you can find an iPhone 10 for well under 300 bucks, I would say definitely pull the trigger. I would not buy this phone for 300 bucks solid because we just saw that we can get a 10s for 30 bucks more. So it, it it's a good buy, but you have to buy this at the right price. Don't get um excuse me, don't get ripped off and buy it, you know, at the wrong price. All right, so the iPhone 8 Plus is extremely solid, a good option here. Let's talk about the price. So 300 bucks for the 8 Plus, that is exactly what I would pay for it. It's kind of retained its value. The unique thing about the 8 Plus is that it's got the home button um, and it's got the bigger screen. So like I said, don't go for the 7 Plus if you want the bigger screen with the home button because I know some people just have to have the home button. Go for the 8 Plus because it's the, the prices are too close. Um, in some cases, they're going for like 364 I would not buy that. Um, at that price point simply because of uh, because you can get an iPhone 11 but again the 11 doesn't have the home button so I mean if you want to if you really got to have it then you know obviously spend the money but like I said I would I would be comfortable spending around like 340 330 for this phone um, you know iPhones retain their value so I know you guys are saying like that's still kind of expensive for an older phone but um, these phones do retain their value and this phone I do see getting iOS 17 as well. It's got a nice 1080p display. It, it, it does have those uh, dual cameras on here, the telephoto lens as you can see with the 2x optical zoom. Uh, image quality on the 8 Plus is still pretty good as well. And guys, I have a ton of comparisons of, um, a ton, tons of comparisons that I did against the iPhone 13 and the 13 Pro, so check those videos out. Um, battery life on here is actually pretty good too. I did a battery drain test. This phone was able to do around like six hours and 30 minutes of screen on time, which I thought was also pretty impressive too. So you get good battery life on this phone. And honestly, if you have an 8 Plus, I would just hold on to it this year um, and just wait for an iPhone 14, uh, honestly, because if you replace the battery in this, this is still a really smooth um, and fast phone. Like there's no uh, issues uh, with this phone at all. It's still a very smooth uh, device here, so I really like the A plus um, at this price point. It really, I really don't have a problem. Like I said, the benefit to this phone, you get Touch ID. You know, you get that clicky home button. You don't have to deal with the notch if you you're somebody that hates uh, looking at the notch um, as well. So yeah, that is pretty much my opinions on the older iPhones. And I'll do a video against the older iPhones versus older Galaxy phones. If you want to pick between the two, I'll point out the sort of pros and cons of each uh, one. But yeah, I think uh, these phones have aged very well. I think Apple really does a great job at longevity with their smartphones. What do you guys think? Be sure to let me know and I'll catch you guys in the next one.